Hey, what's up, Facebook? It's Dave Simney, 12 Minute Mentor, coming to you live from Southern California. We're finally happy to get the sun out here. Um, I know all of you that are still snowed in are like, what? Um, guys, I wanted to come live today and just get right to it. Um, I'm speaking with no script, just kind of off the cuff, but you know, um, I'm not a psychologist, okay, and I'm not a professional, but at 43 years old, you know what? Um, I've been around enough to uh, be with a lot of different personality types. Um, I have been a student of personal development for now 15 years. I've gone to conferences, I've read a ton of books, and a couple books have really stood out to me. And one of them was uh, by Bob Berg, it's called The Go-Giver. And uh, that was a very powerful book, and the book that uh, I'm reading now is called Ego is the Enemy. And I just thought I would come and share a little, uh, a few thoughts I've been, you know, thinking about and considering because I think it's very important for us as we go out there into the world to figure out who we're dealing with when we are getting into relationships and business partnerships and even just out there um, with our friends and, and, and even family and, and all the different things. I think this is valuable life knowledge. So today we're talking about givers and takers, right? So when I first got the book, Ego is the Enemy, actually one of the executives at our corporate company gave it to me, I think over the holidays. And, you know, I opened it up and I saw the book. And as much as I wanted to be excited about Ego is the Enemy, I thought, is this guy trying to tell me something? Is there a message in here? And then, of course, he had put a nice note in the flyleaf about how it's critical for leaders to really understand, um, you know, the difference between ego and confidence and those kinds of things. And so, you know, I, I let my guard down because at first, you know, I, I tend to be very defensive, right? When somebody tells us we're doing something wrong or when somebody implies that we could do better, right? Uh, isn't it your first, like, reaction to get defensive and, and try to justify? it. Hey, Judy. Um, and, and so when I read that book, I thought, okay, I've got to figure this out. And you've probably heard that we are the five people we spend the most time with. And that's so true because we want to check your circle, guys. We want to understand giver and taker. So I want to interact with you guys. Hey, Donna, I want you guys to kind of start to tell me attributes as we riff here on the difference between a giver and a taker. So I'm going to start, and I'd love your help. If you're watching this, hit replay. Um, and if you like what you're hearing, follow me over at the number 12 and then Minute Mentor, at 12 Minute Mentor. All right. A giver lives in abundance. A giver believes in pay it forward. A giver um, practices servant leadership. All right, that's a giver. You always know those givers because they're hu they're generally huggers. They're people who want to ask questions and don't like to talk about themselves all the time. That's a giver. Let's talk about a taker. A taker is someone who lives in scarcity, in desperation, who has ego and is always concerned about what they've done and themselves and who, what celebrities they're talking to and who they know and how great they are, right? That's a taker. Someone who um, is only interested in you for what you can give to them, either financially or from a relationship standpoint. Guys, help me out here. Let's talk about giving and taking, all right? Hey, Mary Lee. Hey, Tina. Let's talk about it for a little bit. All right, let's talk more about a giver. A giver is somebody who understands the power that... So let's, let's, let's back up. In a relationship or a business, right? We all know that the reality is, is most people are thinking, what's in it for me? Why should I care? Right? I don't think everybody's out there looking to build these relationships and these deep friendships. I mean, I don't have a lot of friends, but the ones I do are really close. A giver is someone who keeps friends for life. A giver is somebody who establishes deep, deep relationships. A taker is someone who cycles through their friends, someone who's always hanging out with new people because they can't hold on to friendships for a long time. Um, a giver is someone who sees the value in someone in a business relationship, but they're not instantly trying to go for the kill and instantly trying to make a sale, right? A giver is willing to give value for free, um, is willing to not send you a script on a Facebook messenger. They're willing to say, hey, how are you? What do you do? I took a look at your, you know, your dog or your kids, or maybe not your kids. That, that might be kind of weird from a stranger, but hey, you have a beautiful family. You know, uh, where do you, you know, uh, what kinds of things do you like doing? Or tell me more about your business or something like that. That's a giver. A taker sends a script, right? Um, help me out here, guys. Start listing um, attributes of a giver and a taker because I think this is valuable information for us as we develop our circle 
to see through people. Because let's face it, whether you're dating, you're in a relationship, whatever you're doing, business relationship, everyone always has an, a, an agenda. And oftentimes that agenda is hidden. So I think like a, a giver is able to not hide their agenda. Like a giver will tell you why they're in a conversation. You know, a giver would, would go into a meeting, like in my business, we have liquid collagen. And so I, I might be meeting with this plastic surgeon today and, and, and I may go in there saying, look, obviously, um, you know, the reason I'm here is because I would love to partner with you. I would love more than anything to be able to, you know, have you as a business partner and have your patients benefit from our liquid collagen. But I also understand that it has to be right for you. It has to be a match and a good fit and something you feel confident about before you put your name on it, right? That's a giver type style. A taker would, would go in and, and drop names and try to figure out like why they're so great and talk about themselves, right? And try to make the sale that way. Yes, Donna from the heart. Yes, takers, emotional vampire. Oh, I love this. Okay, so Donna, let's talk about that. You know, if you lead with love, you're a giver. If you lead with compassion, you're a giver. If you lead with um, encouragement and, and honestly really want to help others. Now, there's nothing wrong with knowing that in the process of being a giver that you're going to benefit. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not a hidden agenda. But it has to be authentic, right? That's a giver. Integrity. Trust. You know, takers. They make promises they can't keep. Takers. They... Uh, they'll borrow something and not give it back. Takers will show you their true colors. And oftentimes it takes a while. I mean, how many people have gotten into a marriage only to realize that they're with a taker, right? I have to ask myself every day, like, am I giving to this relationship? Am I giving to this business? Am I giving to my business partners? Or am I taking? Or am I adding value? Because it's okay, guys. Oh, yeah, takers can be selfish, Jamie. Yes, if you're just joining us, we're talking about attributes of a giver, attributes of a taker. Um, so, Jamie, let's riff on that for a minute. Takers are selfish. They think about themselves and what's in it for me. I have people to this day in my life who the only time they call me is when they want something. I have people to this day, when I was with Lady Gaga, do you know how many people came out of the woodworks that I hadn't talked to in years that just called me for tickets? And they literally wouldn't even ask me how I'm doing. They would just text me. And uh, like, are you kidding me? You haven't called me in five years and you want Lady Gaga tickets? Um, when I was on television one time, my wife and I were on a show. I don't really like to talk about it much, uh, but we were on TV. And the next week, I probably had half a dozen people call because it was like 15 million people saw it. And I had like, I had like all these people call me out of the blue. And it was like, really? So like, if you have those people in your life, now there's a difference, guys, between calling someone when you need something or calling them when you know you have something that will benefit them as well as you. It's okay to get benefit and be someone who takes. So let's let's just say this. This isn't a taker bash. I think as a taker, we have to learn to receive is the difference. It's not so much about taking as it is receiving. So we got to receive gifts from people. You know those people who aren't good receivers. Like you've got to be okay to say, yes, I'm awesome. And someone cares about me enough to give a gift. I don't have to give them something back in return. You know, when someone gives you something out of their heart, take it and be okay with it. Receive it is, I think, the terminology. Um... And I think that, thank you, Marilee, and, and this wasn't a, um, a video or a live to be able to like talk about me in general. I wanted to get a discussion about discerning the difference of why we need to know who are the energy-sucking vampires in our life who are always just interested in what they can get out of it. But I believe in mutually beneficial relationships. Mutually beneficial relationships means there's a give and take. And you should always be asking yourself, how much can I give to this relationship, to this business partner, to this spouse, or to this person I'm dating, or to this family member, okay? And Donna, you said, just like with compliments, when somebody compliments you, say thank you. Yes, gratitude is so important as a giver. As a giver, we practice empathy. As a giver, we practice um, daily, daily gratitude for people, letting them know we love them. How important is that in a relationship, right? Letting them know they're special and they're important, no matter where they are on the hierarchy, right? In my business, you know, we have, I think, over 400 business partners. And most of my quote unquote business or volume comes from like three people, right? But there's also 
four, 500 people and then thousands and thousands of customers. And if I went around treating my team member like, you know, oh, you're, you're not that important to me because, you know, I don't make that much money off you or something. Could you imagine like what might, what kind of culture I would have in our team and in our business if, if that's how I approached it? But yet there are those people out there. Now, there's a difference between the time that you spend. We all have the same 24 hours a day. But if you instinctively can start to learn how you can give, give back to the community, have compassion, Judy, that's right, have compassion and show that, yes, D, uh, D, like reciprocity, that's so important for a giver mentality. So I think this is a great exercise, guys, in like asking yourself every day, how can I give? Whether it's giving back to charity, giving your time, you know, not everybody has a lot of money to give to charity, giving your time, investing in, like for me, one of the things I can do, I know is I can mentor. I mentor a, a lot of like college kids or aspiring musicians in the music industry, just because that's kind of where my name got associated with. And that's what I feel like I'm pretty good at. The other thing that I'm trying to do to give back is like, I'm coaching this little league team. And I had a kid yesterday, um, his, his dad like wanted him to, him to, he wanted to quit because the timing of the practices didn't work out and he thought, well, this is a waste. And I thought, one, this kid is having fun. But the other thing I thought is, what a shame like for this person to just quit when I, I work on commission, right? Um, I don't have a salary. And so like it costs me money to go coach a little league team, right? I mean, it actually legitimately costs me money of not working my business to go and give back you know, spend time with my son and to coach these kids and try to mentor these kids and show them the power of teamwork, right? But yet this guy was like, just came up and said, okay, how do we quit? Like, how do we get on another team that can make their practices? And I literally was like, whoa, there's a taker, right? Are you a giver or a taker? Ask yourself that question and understand how you can be a good receiver, but how you can also give to people and do it in abundance and live in abundance, not scarcity. And when times are tough, when you're going through a struggle, it's your time to be a receiver, and that's okay. There is nothing wrong with being a receiver, but practice gratitude. Don't ignore somebody if you've taken from them, okay, and you're not able to give back to them, but they're asking you about it. Don't ignore people. Let people know that, it, that there's acknowledgement. And I think that is such a, a powerful message. All right, guys, so thank you for watching. Tag somebody that wants to hear this. Thank you guys so much. Blow up the hearts if you like this and follow me over at 12-Minute Mentor. Have an amazing Friday, you guys. Um, I will too. Got a big game, our third game tomorrow with the Little League. We're one and one, so we're playing the Angels. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna crush that game. We had a great practice yesterday. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys for watching and go out there and be givers, guys. Bye.